Ah, hello everybody, it's just me again, Eric, with a K. And I'm so excited to be back to tell you some more of this story that is called Rosea Dreams by Dietlef Linda. We are now on chapter 8 and this chapter is called Knock Knock. Knock Knock, who's there? It is me, hello. Okay, let's continue with the story. I hope you like it. Knock Knock. The story, Rosea Dreams, Chapter 8. They were sitting in a pavilion in the Chime Tree Grove, one of the places Rosea and Gideon had dreamed up in Togetherland. The trees were looking like weeping willows, but instead of leaves reaching down from the branches towards the ground, the Chime Trees had many small, tiny bells. As the bells also were in place of leaves, the right name for them might be leaf bells. The leaf bells, like all leaves and grass in Togetherland, were not green, but different shades of pink. Togetherland was their place, a world created by their dreams, and here they were not Rosea and Gideon. They were fierce and big mouth. This was their world. But they had learned that there were other worlds. Rosea had told Gideon about what Father Jacob had explained to her about the worlds of writers and storytellers, dream worlds which were shared. They had also to think about dreams of other dreamers, not shared but strong enough to become real in the realm of dreams. They had also thought about entering other worlds but knew that it would be impolite and wrong to do so uninvited. Even if they managed to contact the dream of others, they would at least have to knock. Then they might be invited. This would be the proper way to go about dream travel. The problem was they did not know how to knock. They did not even know how to find a door to another dream world to knock at. Rosea said, Father Jacob told me that we have imagined power because we are children. We are much better at belief. Big Mouth thought about it and summed it up. So, as children we are strong believers and because of this our imagination is stronger. Strong enough to become real here in the realm of dreams. I think we already knew this, but... What use is it finding doors and learning how to ask permission to another's dream? Father Jacob said we only need to believe and then look hard enough. Big Mouth asked, Are you sure it was not to believe while we looked hard for it? She replied, Oh, that, oh that, what, what is the difference? Big Mouth heaved a big sigh. It is much harder. To just believe and then work is one thing, but to keep up the belief while working hard is a greater challenge. Have you ever run really fast and really far? Rosea nodded. Well, so you know the distance you can manage, and you know the speed you can achieve. She answered, Yes, I do. He continued, Now, when you would have to run the same distance again, and as fast as you did before, would it be hard? Again she nodded. Still, if I asked you to run the distance at the speed, you would tell me that you can. She was sure about that. I sure can. I, ha I have done it before. He got that smug smile which he always displayed before he announced something that he thought to be very smart and important. And with this smile he asked her, Would you be as sure as now, on the last stretch, just before you finally can see your goal? She had to admit, I don't think so. I would be tired, breathing a lot, and my legs would hurt. Big Mouth finished. And that is why belief during a task is harder than before or after. They went silent for a while before Rosea announced, We will try, and we will do it. 
He smiled, but this was a smile she liked far more than his important one. That is why you are called fierce. This made her smile as well. And she smiled even more when he added, your strength is your fiery spirit. Fierce did not have to think much on that one as she completed his idea. Then your strength, Big Mouth, must be your words. They summoned the flying swans and they went far and wide searching for a door or a bridge or a breach, a tunnel, a road, a path or even just a window. They searched without knowing exactly what they were looking for. They searched for a way to connect to another dream world. And the longer they searched, the more apparent it became that they did not know what they were doing. Big Mouth stayed steady and explained every new attempt as they went from flying to riding to walking and even to digging in their search. Fierce plodded on with what could best be described as fierce determination. Then she lost her temper. She stamped on the ground. No sweet Rosea, all fiery fierce. She literally flared up. Togetherland is created by dreams. Rosea and Gideon had filled it with their dreams and wishes and imagination till it had a life of its own. In a dream world, the feelings of the creators are powerful. Fierce flared up with actual flames. She flared up with actual flames! There was fire coming out of her, you know! Parts of her had become fire. Flames danced all over her without doing her harm. Then the flames shot up into the sky as one fiery surge. In the sky, the flames exploded to form a circle. Outside of the circle, they could see the same sky. But inside the circle, the view was a little bit hazy. The two knew this was the door they had been looking for. They had not found the door. Fierce had made it. Big Mouth shouted towards the fiery circle in the sky. Is there anybody out there? Is there anybody behind that circle in the sky? We would like to come through and visit your world. His voice rang through all of Togetherland and looking at the fiery circle in the sky, they hoped that it had been heard from beyond in a world of another person's dream. They waited. They had their door. They had knocked. All they still needed was an invitation. Rosea told her friend, You were wrong. Gideon asked, What was I wrong about? She replied with a slightly shaken expression on her face. You said it is hardest to believe while you are doing the work. You said it is easy when the goal is reached. He asked, And? She answered, And we, we did it. And I cannot believe it. He looked up at the sky, afraid that the door she made would go away because she did not believe in it. But the fiery circle was still there. For a moment he had forgotten that the world they had created had a life of its own. This made him wonder if they would ever be able to close the door again. He would need to think about that, but his thoughts were interrupted as a voice from the far side of the circle answered them. This voice did not ring through the world. It formed in their thoughts. They had their invitation. It is getting so exciting and that is where we will leave it today at the end of chapter 8. Knock knock in the story of Rosea Dreams by Dietlif Linda but know that there are going to be so many more stories on character stories for children and that the next part of this story I will be telling you soon. So make sure you don't miss it. It's getting very exciting. Are they going to get to go into somebody else's dream world? <gasps> I do hope so. We are all going to find out together. That is so exciting. I hope you like it.
Goodbye, everybody. Till next time. Keep watching. Tell your friends. Character stories for children. Goodbye.